needed to, to help in Bosnia and Herzegovina. I'm not quite sure whether the members of the panel would be able to answer this question. I, it's a question of a needs assessment. It's like Judge Cresso is saying there that, in fact, she's the one to answer the question better. So I, so I don't know, maybe Judge Cresso might have to say something. Would you like to say something, Judge Cresso? Sorry to take over from you, Mr. Ellis, but... I will always defer to a judge, so go ahead. <laughs> Thank you very much to Judge Molotov. I will be on the next panel. And uh, on the next panel, I was going to speak in, at greater length about this. Our domestic needs is something that we, Bosnia and Herzegovina, should assess. We have been working for five years with international judges. Uh, their uh, term has been extended for another three years, so in total it will be eight years. And uh, this is a huge experience of us working as a hybrid court. However, in addition to uh, this term, hybrid court, I believe that we are an exclusively domestic court, not an ad hoc court. We apply domestic laws, uh, relying on the experience of the ICTY and also international um, treaties. But I will speak more about this uh, at the next panel. Because I want to bring in uh, a couple other uh, audience members because we're closing down on this. So l let, me, uh, let me go back to that woman and then we'll go here, uh, back here in, in yes. Uh, thank you. I'm Vesna Budmir, uh, Deputy Chief Prosecutor of Bosnia and Herzegovina. I will uh, take the liberty of answering the questions that were put here. One of the questions here was whether there was a possibility for the judges of Bosnia and Herzegovina to come to the ICTY and to take um, equal part in the work of the chambers. Um, somebody here put that question. And I don't see any problem in any of the judges of the court in Bosnia and Herzegovina who have had more than five years' experience in working on war crimes cases and who are judges of the highest quality, which is something that they have proven uh, by their judgments. I don't see any problem in them working as judges in ICTY chambers and being absolutely equal. Um, equally working with other judges rather than just being observers. I disagree with the statement that the court of Bosnia and Herzegovina and the prosecutor's office of Bosnia and Herzegovina are some sort of hybrid institutions. We are the institutions of the state of Bosnia and Herzegovina with certain rights and obligations as established by law. The third point I want to make. Before the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, we had in force a special system. After the war, the role of the prosecutor was changed and adversarial system was introduced. That was a huge change. However, we judges and prosecutors in Bosnia and Herzegovina, in a very short period of time, uh, owing to our professionalism, our independence, which is guaranteed by the High Judicial Council of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and owing to the existence of two laws, the Law on Criminal Procedure and the Criminal Law of Bosnia and Herzegovina, based on all of that, in a very short space of time, with the assistance of the ICTY and OTP, we were able to educate ourselves and to become capable on working on war crimes cases, which is evidenced by the results we have achieved so far. Also, international humanitarian law was a big unknown for a lot of us, but I think that even in that field, we have gained uh, substantial expertise. 
Marco Prelec, my colleague who used to work with us in the Office of the Prosecutor in Bosnia and Herzegovina, I wish to reply to his question since none of the panelists answered his question. Based on the information I have, one international judge had his term extended. Additional three international judges are about to be appointed to the war crimes chamber. Based on the information I have, that appointment should be concluded by March of this year. Mr. Prelitz also asked, uh, who are the people who could serve as judges and prosecutors in the court of Bosnia and Herzegovina? And to that, I can give you just one answer. Those are the judges and people who are lawyers and who used to be judges and prosecutors in their country and who, by coming to our country, they first need to study two laws, the law on criminal procedure and the criminal law of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Thank you. Thank you very much for that intervention. I, I apologize. I know there's lots of questions here, but I've been told that my time is coming to an end. Um, and so I wanted to just give, uh, and there'll be opportunities on the next session too, but if the panel members have any last remaining uh, uh, thoughts or uh, uh, points, anything, Judge Pokar? Very quickly, I would uh, like to, um, to stress uh, that I agree with the characterization of the state court in uh, Sarajevo as a national court, as a domestic court. I never liked uh, the, I speak as a professor now, I never liked uh, the characterization of this court as an internationalized court. Uh, and I never liked uh, to, that the judges, um, the external judges there, be uh, characterized as international judges. I think they are just internationally appointed judges to that court, but they are domestic judges when they act, they take the functions there. Uh, the other point I wanted to, to make uh, quickly uh, to follow up uh, the question on, uh, on education, uh, it's true we have a number of measures now, and it's amazing how many young people come to work at uh, the tribunal uh, as interns, unpaid, and then go back to their activities in the academic world, which, uh, uh, of course, uh, will benefit future generations. But uh, ultimately, uh, um, the existence itself of the tribunal, that's part of the legacy, has uh, pushed uh, the educational world, universities in general, to have more courses on this matter, and this is something that will benefit inevitably future generations. So Great. it's part of the legacy, I think. Thank you. Any other final points here? Georgia? I'll try to be quick. Um, I, I think we, to some extent, have neglected the, the timeline that we have for the uh, domestic war crime prosecutions, this is especially in light of, of the question of sustainability. I mean, we've seen in other places that for different reasons, uh, either the, the lack of public interest, uh, political will is lacking, there's a saturation, but obviously the question of sustainability and keeping, keep going with these processes is one of the questions that we really need to keep in mind and have a very strong strategy. I, I don't think it's ju enough just to build institutions. We need to actually build a civil society. The second point is that um, we should not necessarily see this as solely a national effort. Uh, some of the efforts done by UNDP and others, uh, OSCE for example, have been regional in, in character in terms of capacity building. And I, I have to say that the, the solidarity among the legal professionals in this region is astounding and that they, it really help build a confidence all around in getting recognition from your colleagues uh, across the border and understanding that you work in similar circumstance. Right. So I think that the confidence building uh, component of this should not be neglected. Okay. And last point, Ivan. First, subscribe to what Georgia uh, has said. And, and I would also like to add that uh, knowledge transfer and development takes two parties. Like, like tango. So the failures and successes cannot be attributable solely to the international community. 
The, the outcome, the results of all these efforts depends very much on the commitment and willingness of the local actors to, to practice what they have learned, to rehearse, if you want to put it that way. Uh, it depends on, on, on um, uh, the political elites and, and institutions to provide the uh, institutional framework and, and, and legislation. So for all these uh, efforts to, be, uh, to, to result in something tangible, especially in terms, in terms of, of, of trials, responsibilities to a great extent of those who are receiving, who are receivers. Great. I want to encourage all of you, uh, as I hope you're doing with the panelists that are still, uh, that will be here for the rest of the afternoon and coffee breaks, by all means, uh, engage them in, in, in the issues that you want to raise. I want to thank the panelists uh, for, for really a wonderful job that they did and for the audience as well. Thank you very much.